In this lesson, I've got a complete program for your weekend. Six exercises, 12 minutes a day for 22 days. There's a link below in the video description as well as a pinned comment for you to download the PDF workbook for this entire program with checklists, calendars, and all the resources you need to knock it out of the park. I was just answering this question on my podcast the other day. You can check that out on everywhere you can find podcasts, The Drum Show, a new episode every week answering your questions. And uh, this is one of the most asked questions that I get is how do I improve my week hand? So I've got a 22 day program for you. you can download all the resources for it. It's six exercises. It's gonna take you 12 minutes a day. It can take longer, but the initial program will take 12 minutes a day. Now, before we get into the exercises, I have three tips I've gotta tell you. And that is, well, maybe four tips. The three Three things you need to do first to improve your weak hand are you need to work it first, you need to work it more, and you need to work it harder. That's called prioritize training, okay? So we just need to work it. Whenever we're playing a basic 4-4 groove, think about that. So we have one. For every eight notes my right hand is playing, my left hand is only playing two notes. You magnify that over tons of practice and tons of gigs and all that, and you see that there is a vast uh, a vast gulf between your right and your left hand, and it's just a natural thing that happens because we use the right hand more. The last tip I would give you, not two, the last tip I'll give you before I dive into the lesson is this. If you wanna start improving your left hand or your right hand, if you're a left-handed person, your weak hand, start using it in your day-to-day -day activities. So instead of eating, with your right hand, start eating with your left hand. You brush your teeth with your right hand, brush it with your left hand. You, brush, you know, it, you need to do things with your, with your weak hand. If you usually open doors with your strong hand, open them with your weak hand. You have to be, become very specific about getting that hand just more involved in using it more. Now, obviously, don't do anything dangerous. If you can't drive with your left hand, then don't drive with your left hand, right? But you wanna do things where you begin to get your uh, weak hand involved in day-to-day -day activities, and that's gonna help with the coordination of the hand outside of your practice time. Let's get to this. Most of these exercises are going to use just the weak hand. Some of them will involve the strong hand to uh, use some other patterns, but we're really gonna be focusing on this. So the first exercise is gonna be two measures long. And what we're gonna do in the first measure is we're gonna play three notes in a row. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. That's the first measure. The second measure, we're gonna play three notes still, but we're gonna play an eighth note followed by two sixteenth notes. So it's gonna go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, then we turn it around. So it's gonna go one E. We're gonna repeat those two measures for two minutes. And some of you may be saying, am I playing in German grip? Am I playing in French grip? Am I playing with uh, finger control? Am I playing with push, pull, drop, grab? Am I playing with rebound? Yes, they're all different techniques and you can do a lot of these exercises using the different techniques and the different hand positions, German, American, and French. So don't get too hung up on that. I would suggest if you decide to go through it with French grip finger control, do that for the entirety of, of the program. If you decide to go through it with uh, more of a molar stroke and using more of that rebound, do that for the entirety of the program where applicable. The second exercise is gonna be three measures long. The first two measures, we're gonna repeat those three times, and it has to do with an accent pattern. So we're gonna play three sets of eight notes, one and two and three and. We're accenting all the downbeats. Now what you'll see is that as I naturally go up, there's a stroke that can happen there, and that's the tap. 
So as I'm going up to prep for the next accent, that tap can happen instead of going one and two and where I'm doing all the work, now we're utilizing the natural motion of the stick. In the, in the fourth beat, we have a triplet, and it's going to be the accent pattern of one, or excuse me, four, la, li. So it's gonna go. The second measure, since that triplet is going to reverse our accent pattern, we're now going to be accenting the upbeats of the first three beats of eighth notes. So now it's going to go one and two and three and. And on the fourth beat, we have unaccented note, accented note, unaccented note in triplets. One. You're going to loop those two beats three times for a total of six measures. The last measure, or the third measure, we're going to play two times, and it's just going to be four beats of triplets with that same accent pattern. So on the first triplet, it's gonna be an accent, then unaccented. And we're gonna follow that two note pattern all throughout those triplets. Let me play that full exercise for you. The third exercise is very, very simple. It's gonna be one measure of eighth notes. One measure of 16th notes. We're gonna repeat those two measures for two minutes. Now by this point in the program, you're probably gonna start feeling some fatigue with your left hand. You may have started feeling it on the first exercise. That's okay, that's what you're supposed to feel. The goal is not how hard we can make the exercises. The goal is that the exercises pinpoint the weak area in our playing. Oftentimes, complexity can get in the way of that. The fourth exercise, we have two measures. The first measure, we're gonna repeat three times. That measure in beat one goes one E and a. Uh. Beat two is two E and a. Uh. One and two together. One E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. Beat three is three and. Beat four is four E and. Three and. All together. One E and a, two E and a, three and four E and. The second measure is exactly like that one, except on the beat number four, we're going to play four sixteenth notes. Four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. Then we start the exercise over again. We're gonna do the exercise for two minutes. Let me demonstrate it for you.
Exercise five is four measures. We repeat each measure two times, and again, we're going to do it for two minutes. The goal is that we make these notes sound very similar. Now, obviously, you're playing with two different sticks, two different hands. They are not gonna sound exactly the same. I don't really subscribe to that method of thinking. Two different hands are gonna sound different even if they play on, to me, even if they play on the same spot on the same drum, they just sound different. It's two different sticks. It's it's it, it's just gonna sound different. So we're gonna try to make those notes sound as close as possible in timbre and tone. In the first measure, it's gonna go right, left, left, left. We're gonna repeat that sticking in 16th notes four times. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. We do that twice. Measure two is a variation or an inversion of that sticking. So now we're gonna have a paradiddle, a same hand paradiddle. It's gonna go left, right, left, left. Left, right, left, left. Left, right, left, left. Left, right, left, left. Four E and a one E. We're gonna repeat that measure two times. The third measure, we're gonna invert that sticking again, and now it is going to be left, left, right, left. This would be called a reverse paradiddle. And the fourth measure, which again, we're gonna repeat two times, is that same sticking, but we have another inversion of it. It's left, 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 right. Now, let me play that entire exercise. We're playing each measure twice, and we're gonna play the whole exercise for two minutes. So when we get to the end of it, go back to beginning until you have reached the two minute mark. First two measures of this next exercise, we're gonna repeat three times, so a total of six measures. The sticking, it's gonna be all in 16th notes for these measures. It's gonna be a three note sticking for the first three beats. It's gonna go right, left, left. We're gonna accent the right hand. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. Then we play a paradiddle to turn it around. Right, left, right, right. Four E and a. Then we're gonna reverse that three note sticking and it's gonna go left, left, right. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and then we play a left-handed paradiddle. Four E and a, two accents in a row there. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E. Those two measures together. Four E and a, one E and a. We play those two measures three times for a total of six measures. measures. The next measure is gonna be all in sextuplets and it's gonna have that same right, left, left sticking and it's gonna go one and two and three and. Then we're gonna use a rudiment. We're gonna use right, left, right, right, left, left. So paradiddle diddle, we're gonna accent the right and the left on beat four. So. So that exercise is going to be a total of seven measures, and again, we're playing it for two minutes. <laughs> 